morning, everyone. Welcome to Wimberley United Methodist Church's outside worship. I'm so excited that we're going to um, start this up weekly and be able to um, enjoy this, uh, this worship time together. As we begin our time together, uh, we do have just a few things to um, announce to you so that y'all are aware of some slight changes from um, last time we met. First off, due to popular demand, we do have an offering box in the back. So if you would like to um, give a, a physical offering today, uh, you are able to do so in, that, um, in the white box in the back, and then we will take that up to the church and make sure that it stays secure until it can be deposited. We're also starting our stewardship series this week. Uh, we'll spend the month of October talking about what it means to spread the joy of Christ with all that we have, with all that we are, and with the church as a whole working to see this, uh, this work done. So I'm excited to, to share this time with you. I'm excited to um, talk about what it means to be good stewards of what God has given us. And also to look ahead into the future to the, the ministry to which we are called to do together. We're also going to be taking communion today. It is the first Sunday of the month, and so we want to make sure that um, as, as much as we are able to engage in our, um, in our traditions and in our practices of worship, that we're doing so even though we're not in the sanctuary. And so we will be taking communion. It'll look, it'll look different, much like the rest of this does. Um, we are going to do communion at the end of our service, and as uh, we, we leave, after the benediction is pronounced, you're going to be invited to go to one of the two tables in the back, grab your communion elements, uh, which is, it's all self-contained in, in one packet. The bread is on the top, and then the juice obviously is at the bottom, um, and you will uh, take the take the bread and take the juice with you back to your cars and take communion um, in uh, in your cars away from everyone so that we can stay masked the entirety of the time that we're together. Um, this is uh, the I've got a little bit of feedback. Can we? This is the 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 best option that uh, that people who have been doing this longer than we have have found to make sure that we can keep everyone safe and also be able to engage in this holy sacrament together. So. Uh, we're going to, to do this, and we're going to uh, remember that Jesus Christ breaks all boundaries, um, breaks all um, boxes that we try to place him in, and that we are able to, to worship God in ways that you know we never thought that we would do even just a few months ago. And so this will be a little bit different, but it will be a great way for us to engage in this holy practice together. If you are in your car and you are worshiping with us from there, we will bring communion to you at the end of the service so that you can stay in your car um, and still participate in this. With that in mind, we're going to begin with an opening prayer. So if you would, please let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you so much for this time that we have to join together, to be together in one place. What a gift it is after so much time apart. God bless this time. Make it what you will. Help us to focus on worship of you for at least the next few minutes. Giving you all that we have and all that we are. God, speak to us in ways that we are not ready for. And meet us in this place in a powerful, miraculous way. All of this we ask and we pray in your name. Amen. Set this drive 
As we come now to the time of offering, we recognize that we're called to give to God not just our gifts, but every aspect of our lives, which means that we also bring to God our petitions. We also bring to God those burdens that we carry, knowing that we serve a God that not only wants us to participate in the kingdom as it unfolds around us, but experience that grace ourselves when we need it the most. So during this time of offering, we want to invite you to do a few things. One is to uh, continue to reflect on how God might be calling you to give toward the ministries of this church and of the church around the world. We're going to be talking more about stewardship uh, today and throughout this week, but we also want to encourage you to take this time to think about what burdens you are carrying, what those things are that you need to lay at the foot of the throne, who those people are in your life that need that extra prayer right now, who you can lift up now to God. Pray especially for Dana Thompson and for their family as they mourn the loss of Floyd. We pray for our president and the administration as uh, many are um, dealing with a, a COVID diagnosis. We pray for all of those within our country who are, are struggling with this disease. And we pray for those prayers that are hard on all of our hearts. So with that, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, as we spend a month talking about joy, Lord, I ask that you would help us to hold on to that now. Even as we begin this time, Lord, remind us that joy is not an emotion. Joy is not a feeling. Joy is not a, a state of being. Joy is a choice that we make. Joy is a decision. Joy is an action. And it's one that you call all of us to engage in regularly. So as a people of God, may we decide joy today. And may that be something that we recognize and that the world recognizes in every aspect of our lives. Lord, right now when the world seems a little darker and a little more chaotic than normal, it's hard to choose joy. When those that we love are, are struggling in the grips of the death of a loved one, when we ourselves are grieving, when those around us are trying to figure out how to pick up their lives after six months, more than six months, of everything just shut down, when so much is unknown, it is hard to choose joy. And yet, Lord, you call us to do just that. Lord, help us to hold on not to the joy that we would have for ourselves, that we would experience in life, but help us to hold on to your joy. The joy that comes with the promise of hope and the promise that no matter how long it feels like we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, God, you are with us. And because of that, we know that we are not standing still in that place. We are walking through it. So, Lord, help us to choose joy now as we lift to you our prayers. As we give this offering to you of both our gifts and the many ways that we can do so. And also the offering of our burdens trusting that you are a God that has promised to pick them up and do something with them. So, Lord, you have heard the prayers that I mentioned before, and you know the prayers of our hearts. 
So God, as we choose joy, may we see you in action in this world. And may it spur us on. God, receive now our offerings as we give them to you. This we pray in your name. Amen. Over the mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free Cause I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down Cause I could sing of your love Forever, and I could sing of your love forever, and I could sing of your love forever. Well, I could sing of your love forever over the mountains and the sea. Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free Cause I'm happy to live in this truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of a way when your love came down Cause I could sing of your love forever of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever well I could sing of your love forever though I feel like dancing it's foolishness I know When the world has seen this light They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now But I could sing of your love forever And I could sing of your love forever And I could sing of your love forever of your love forever cause I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever All right, I got a little zealous in my prayer, and I forgot to do the Lord's Prayer. We're going to move that to communion. We will still do it. I apologize for that. As we move on in our time of worship, let us join together in our affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. If you would please let us pray together as we prepare to hear from the word of God. 
God, open our ears that we would hear, open our hearts that we would understand, and God, move our feet, that in experiencing your word, we would not be able to sit still, but we would be urged into action to be your people in this world. God, inspire us with your spirit. Breathe into us your spirit this morning. And change us, God, that we might change the world. All this we ask and we pray in your name. Amen. Hear this word from 2 Corinthians 9, 5 through 9. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus tells a parable to those who would listen. A parable about a sower who went out into the field to scatter seeds. Now the sower did not do uh, the kind of planting that I'm used to. I'm not good at it. I still kill everything I try to grow. But uh, the sower doesn't do the thing that I'm used to where you, you put the seeds very neatly in a row and are very careful about where you put each seed. No, this sower goes out with a big sack of seed and flings it wherever it will land, covering all of the ground. He flings it with such force that some of it doesn't even go onto soil at all. Some of it lands on the path where it's trampled and birds eat it. Some of it lands in rocky ground where it's not going to grow, in thorny ground where it will be choked. And some of it does land in good soil. And as this sower spreads abundantly, that which lands in good soil blooms abundantly. Jesus tells another story of some servants who were, were given a, a different amount of money by their master. Each of them received a, a different amount of money, and they were told to go and do something with it while the master was away. Well, two of the servants took what they were given, and, and they ended up doubling what they were given. So that when the master came back, They brought such an abundance that the master was so pleased and excited that they had been able to do such great things with what they were given. The third person, though, he took what he was given and and he was so worried that he would lose part of the master's money that he buried it in the ground. So that when the master came back, he brought him some dirty money back and that was all he had to give. So afraid was he that he didn't chance abundance. Instead, he hid in scarcity. Jesus also doesn't tell this last story. He experiences a story where uh, he's watching people go into the temple and bring their offering to God. And he sees all of these people come in and they give these great gifts of abundance and Uh, It's so exciting to see so much money being brought into the temple treasury. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of these grand gifts, he sees this widow come and drop in two coins that together were about a penny. And he gets up so excited after seeing this. And he looks at this woman and he tells his disciples, look, look what she did. I tell you the truth. This woman has given more today than anyone else. For they gave out of their excess. She gave out of all she had. These three stories are all about abundance. Abundance seen in very different ways. The first is about seeds being flung abundantly 
and growing abundantly because of that. The second is a story about abundance resulting from faith, resulting from a chance taken in the name of God. And the third is about an abundance that looks very different than we might be used to. It's about the abundance of God compared to the abundance of this world. And all of them are stories that would have jarred the people who heard them at first. For abundance is not something that a first century Palestinian Jew is going to understand very well. Abundance was not something that Jesus' people knew in Jesus' time. Even knowing that, though, Jesus is clear that abundance is absolutely what the people of God are supposed to live into. It's an abundance that looks different from the world, but it is an abundance nonetheless. Now here's the deal, y'all. Abundance is not an easy thing for us to live into. It wasn't easy for the Jews of Jesus' time, and it's not easy for us as well. In fact, it's rather hard. Our world places such great value on stuff. In fact, it places value on basically anything that it can. Our world places the priority in life in accruing things of value and places no limit on how much will ever be enough, which means that we spend our lives seeking and seeking and seeking more and more and more. This leads to a scarcity mindset that says that what I have is not enough. What you have is not enough. What we have is not and will ever be enough. And the truth is that this scarcity mindset, it goes all the way back to the beginning of Genesis. It goes all the way back to the story of Adam and Eve who are given everything they could ever want or need and told, Don't break the one rule, right? And yet, the one thing that they wanted was the one thing they were told they could not have. We see it as well in their children, Cain and Abel, as Abel receives the blessing from God, and Cain, who does not have it, is so angry that he strikes his brother dead so that his brother would not have something that he could not have himself. The scarcity mindset goes all the way back to the very beginning of the human condition. And it's something that we all struggle with in one way or another. But the truth in what Jesus Christ tries to teach his disciples and teach us is that this is not something that we have to live into. Scarcity is not of God. It is not of God's kingdom that we are called to live into, that we are called to bring into this world. We can do more. We can be different. We can instead live into abundance. Abundance is what our scripture today is about as well. It's about choosing abundance when we have the opportunities to do so. Paul is trying to tell the church in Corinth that you have what it takes to make an impact in the world but you get to choose on whether or not you engage it. You get to choose on whether or not you give. You get to choose on whether or not you live into abundance. This is actually different than the practices of uh, the Jews at this time. You see, it was understood that if you were a practicing Jew, you gave. You didn't actually have a choice in the matter. You were called to give every time you came to the temple, and you were called to come to the temple as often as possible. You were called to give a tax that went to help pay for and provide for the priests and all of those who worked within the temple. The Old Testament says we're not supposed to just give a tithe, which is what we usually talk about, right? The first fruits, that 10%. We're actually called to give from the Old Testament 33%, a third of what we receive, We're supposed to give to the work of God. Paul says, though, that what we give to the church, 
what we give to Jesus Christ is not something that is forced. It's not something that's pre-prescribed. It's a free choice for each person to decide how much they will give, how often they will give, and more importantly, how they will feel about that gift. You know, the truth is that there are a lot of things that we have to pay in life, right? What's the phrase? Nothing is certain but death and taxes. We all have things that we have to pay in life. Giving to the church, according to Paul, is not one of them. Giving to the work of God, according to Paul, is not something that we have to do. It's not an obligation. It is a privilege and one that we get to live into every single day. Paul calls the church in Corinth to live this way, and Paul makes sure that they understand that he knows that this is not normal. It's not normal to give in this way. It's not normal to see what we give to God as a choice. In fact, it's not just otherworldly, it's weird. We heard Billy say earlier that, that Paul in this uh, scripture says, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, that's a, a really fun phrase. It makes for a really good vacation Bible school song. Uh, but it's actually not the best translation of what we hear in the Greek there. You see, the word that, that we use to, to translate as cheerful, that word in Greek is hilarion. And as you can imagine from hearing it, it's where we get words like hilarious from and hilarity. A direct translation of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, would be God loves a hilarious giver. You see, Paul is trying to tell the church in Corinth that what we do is something that not only makes no sense to the world, but it makes the world laugh at us. Why would we give and give joyfully and give freely of what we have when we don't have to? Why would we make what we have earned, what we have brought in, a free gift to someone else with no obligation and, and see it as not something that we're forced to do, but something that we have the great privilege to do? God loves a hilarious giver because as the world is laughing at us for doing so, we are choosing to laugh at this great joy of getting to give to God of getting to provide for those who cannot provide for themselves, of getting the privilege of seeing the kingdom of God spring up around us in all that we do. We get the great privilege of choosing abundance over scarcity. And Paul urges the Corinthians, Paul urges us to live into just this, to live into abundance, godly abundance that doesn't look like the scarcity of the world, but instead is that choice to choose joy in all that we do and live hilariously in the name of Jesus Christ. For when we do, when we choose abundance, when we sow abundantly as the sower in the parable does, my friends, we also reap abundantly. We reap a harvest of abundant joy that we can then turn around and spread again so that it grows into 30, 60, 100 fold what is expected in this world. It's an abundant joy that can quickly spread and cover every aspect of our lives and of our world. And it is a joy in abundance that our world right now desperately needs. So today, my friends, as we begin our, our stewardship series, as we begin to talk about what it means to spread the joy, may we celebrate our abundant God who calls us to live differently than the scarcity of the world. May we hear that call out of scarcity and may we give hilariously and abundantly to the work of the kingdom around us that God might reap a harvest of joy because of the seeds that we have sown. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Let us sing together our response song. darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. your life that I might be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sunshine in all of its brilliance, the King of glory. King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. set free Oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me So worthy is a lamb who was slain And worthy is a king who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Yeah, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, he's worthy, worthy, worthy. unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross cause you laid down your life so I might be set free my Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me
you would please let us pray together. Holy God, you have done so much for us. You've given your very life that we would have life, that we would be set free. God, all that we have is a gift from you. We thank you and we praise you for it. God, we know that you have been at work in this world from the very beginning of the beginning, showering grace and abundance upon this world, upon your creation, upon your people. We know that long before we were ever walking the earth, God, you were. Long before we breathed our first breath, you were breathing life and grace into this place. And God, no matter how many times as your people we turned away from you and walked the other way, no matter how many times through fear or envy or temptation we gave into scarcity instead of your abundance, God, you always called us back. You always showered us in love. You always showed us grace upon grace. And God, when our love utterly failed, your love remained steadfast in such an incarnate way as to give your very Son, Jesus Christ, for us. That when we had nothing to redeem ourselves, you provided everything in your Son. We thank you, we praise you for that, Lord. We hear again the words of your son as he gathered with his, his friends, his disciples for the Passover meal. And we know it looked a lot different than the meal that we will share. And yet, God, even that night, you were doing different things in the midst of a tradition. But when Christ should have taken the bread and asked the question about why do we eat unleavened bread on this day, he instead blessed you for the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat of this, all of you. This is my body given for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. When the supper was over and it was time to, to take up the cup of Elijah and talk about the work that you had done through the prophets, Jesus instead took the cup, blessed you for it, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the cup of the new covenant, the new covenant. Filled with grace for you and for all. Drink in remembrance of me. God, we remember your words, we remember these acts, and we celebrate them now as we come to participate in them again. Do a new thing in this place, God. Do a new thing in our hearts. And pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of those gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. May you bless them, may you bless us. May you be our abundance and our joy. May we choose you as you have chosen us. And may we move from this place as your people who go out into the world having received the body and blood of Christ to be the body and blood of Christ ourselves. We pray all of this in the name of your saving son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, it comes prepackaged, it comes sterilized, but this is still the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is power, it is grace, it is salvation for you, for me, and for the world. So as we go from this place, as you take your, your body and blood, may you take it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. May you celebrate what Christ has done. And may you participate again this day in that great gift of abundance that we have received, that we are called to give. Amen. as God's people of joy. Go ready to live into abundance that you might spread that abundance to the world around you. Choose joy this day. Choose abundance. Choose living into the kingdom that God has sprung up around for you, for us, for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.